So in order to start using the image picker and image cropper, we first need to import both of those packages. So inside our terminal in VS Code here, we'll run flutter pub add image picker. Oops, there's an underscore there. All right, and that's gonna fetch the most recent version, which is 0.84. And then we'll do the same thing for the image cropper. All right, so as you can see here in our pubspec.yaml file, we have both packages, so we're good there. What we need to do now is give iOS permission to use both the camera and the photo library. So what we need to do is go into the iOS directory and to runner and look for the info.plist file. And in here, we'll just add a new key. And the first one is going to be NS photo library usage description. And what this basically says is, hey, this is what we'll be using the photo library for. So you wanna be very descriptive here, but for demo purposes, I'll just say uh, the photo library usage description goes here. The next permission that we need to add is similar to above, but it's for the camera. And that is NS camera usage description. Now this is similar to the one above, but this one is letting them know, or letting Apple know what we're using the camera for. So we'll do a similar thing and just say the camera usage description goes here. All right, so we've got our permissions in there. Uh, you only have to do this for iOS, not Android, but for Android, um, you will need to add an activity in order to use the cropper. So for the image picker, you have to make modifications on iOS and for Android, you have to make modifications uh, for the cropper. But um, just something to keep in mind that you don't have to do it for both of them, uh, for both packages on both platforms. So a good way to make sure that we entered everything correctly is to go ahead and run the project. And if it builds, oops, we can't build in here. Sorry, we gotta be in the demo file or main.dart so if everything works perfectly the project will run so we'll go ahead and test and make sure that this loads up how it needs to all right so our project loaded that means we're ready to code so let's go ahead and jump into jump into building the actual ui of this page All right, so now that we have our demo page up, as you can see here, it's just an empty scaffold with the title of the packages we're using. So let's go ahead and plug in some of this UI. So what we're gonna be building is a, a simple box with a camera icon that allows the user to click on it and then we'll prompt them to select whether they're choosing a photo from their camera or if they're taking a photo, uh, just taking a, a fresh photo. So first thing we need to do is we need to go into this build right um, and to make it a square inside this screen we'll just need to get the screen width and then set that for the containers width and height so to do that we'll create a variable called screen width and we get the screen width by calling media query dot of context size dot width So now we have the screen width of whatever device we're on. Then we'll come down here into the column and this is where we'll add a gesture detector widget. And we're gonna wrap that with the container. Oh, well actually, I said it backwards. We're gonna wrap the container with the gesture detector. That way we can know when the user clicks on it or not. You can use an inkwell here as well, but I like gesture detector just cause it has more more uh, functionality when it comes to on tap and long tap and on press and things like that. So we'll add our on tap um, and we'll just leave it empty for now. And then for the child, we're gonna have that container that we talked about earlier. All right, and we need to set the height to the screen width as well as the width to the screen width. 
and then we need to make the color we're gonna make it gray just so it stands out from the white and it should pop up now if we save it and run that let's see what we get okay we got our, our gray square perfect what we want in here now is an icon that lets the user know that hey you can add a photo here so for the child of this container we'll be using an icon and going to be an icon of add a photo we want it to be white that way it stands out inside the gray square so we'll say colors.white and then we want it to be a decent size that way it's noticeable so we'll say size 150 so let's go ahead and save that perfect so as you can see here we have our icon now it doesn't really have a uh doesn't really do anything just yet but what we can do just to show that we're actually tapping it is inside the on tap we'll just make a print statement that says tapped so now when we click it oops there we go it says flutter tapped let me do that one more time tapped 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 Perfect. So that's basically the UI that we'll be working with. Now we can go ahead and jump in to how to on how to use the image picker and the image cropper together. Okay, so we have our UI in here now. What we want to do now is create those functions that allow us to actually take the photos. So instead of printing tap, what we want to do is call a function that will uh, prompt the user to select between adding a photo or I'm sorry choosing a photo or taking a photo um, themselves so we'll call the function show select image dialog and we want to call show Cupertino modal pop-up all right let's see here oh got to pass in the context so it's going to take the context um, and we also need the builder so we're going to build that modal pop-up by calling build context context and then in here is where we're we this is where we will return a widget called a Cupertino action sheet and this is going to be um, the window that has those options. So in here, return Cupertino action sheet. And the title of the action sheet is going to be add photo. And then we need to add some actions. And the actions are just going to be an array of objects, which are going to be the buttons. Oops, I spelled action sheet wrong. There we go. And yeah, I spelled actions wrong. All right. Got that in there. So the first action that we want to add is to take a photo. So we'll add a Cupertino action sheet action that says take photo. And remember, we're not actually going to be taking a photo because you can't take it on simulators, but it's good to have this option in your app. Uh, all right. And then we need the on pressed. And we'll leave that blank for now. All right. Now let's run that and see what we get. Oops, we need to replace that tap function with the function that we just created. All right, so now when we click the icon, we get this Cupertino action, but this doesn't do much for us because we can't cancel and we can't really do anything. So let's just continue with this function right here. And I can't get out of it. Oh, I can't, okay, we're good. <laughs> So I'm just gonna copy and paste this for the other actions, which is 
uh, if we're not taking a photo, then what we want to do is choose from gallery. All right, cool. So we got both of our actions and we also want to let the user be able to cancel if they don't want to choose either. So we'll add a cancel button to our Cupertino action sheet. So we'll say Cupertino action. Actually, I'll just copy and paste it. So instead of take photo, we're going to have a cancel. And to make it stand out, we'll make it the color red. Oops. Color. Colors red. And all we want to do is to close the modal, we just call navigator.pop. All right. So let's see what this does now. All right, so we have the option to take a photo, choose from gallery or cancel. Perfect. So now that we have the modal, let's actually jump into picking a picture and then being able to crop it. All right, so we have the UI for the app. Uh, as you can see here, we got the modal popping up. So now we need to add the functionality for when we actually need to choose an image. So we need to create a variable that we can use to represent um, the image. So we're gonna create an X file variable. And the X file is essentially um, just a file type that comes with the image picker package. And uh, I already had it imported in here. So uh, if we come down here, what we want to do in the UI now is check to see if it's null. And if it is, then we display this icon. But if not, then we want to display an image uh, that they selected. So we'll say image. pass in a file image or pass in a file and the file is going to take in the path of the image they selected and then for the container we need to make the fit a box fit contain and be sure to import the dart.io we display the icon otherwise we display the image so let's go down here and make our handle image function so what that function is going to do is it's going to allow the user to pick an image from their gallery and then we'll do what we want with it once they select it so we'll call void handle image required image source source and the image source is going to be what type of selection they choose from the action sheet. And we'll discuss that in a second. So first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of that modal where they select, uh, take a photo or choose from gallery, because at this point they've already selected their options. So we don't need that modal anymore. Uh, context. And then from there, we'll create a local variable that uh, we will use to uh, allow them to select their image. So we'll call image picker that pick image and pass in the source from our function. And then we need to import this. Oh no, we already have that actually. Cool. All right. And then from there, we'll just update the UI with that image that we selected. But first, we need to make sure that it's not null. So if image file does not equal null, then we'll do all this. All right, let me add that. And then from there, we'll pass in our handle image function to the action. So when we 
Oh, I'm sorry, it's not right here. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, so for source, we'll say image source dot camera. And then same thing for the gallery, but it's going to have a image source of gallery. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and try this out now. from gallery all right so now we can pick an image so let's select this one cool so we got our handle image working but now as you can see there's some gray space around here let's see what we can do if we actually try to crop the image and I'll discuss that in the next scene all right so now we want to create our crop image function in order to do that we want to return a possible null X file. We'll call it a function crop image. And we will require a X file, which is going to be the one that the user selects from their gallery. All right. So from there, we're going to make the crop image possibly null because the user could get to the crop screen and then decide that they don't want to crop anything. And we don't want to um, keep continuing with a function that has a nullable um, or has a null value for the crop image. So um, we need to call the function crop image on the image crop image cropper class. I'm sorry. And then the source path is going to be the image file dot path. Then what we need to do is check and make sure that it's not null and if it is then we just return null because we can't get the image path image path of a null image but if it's not we continue the rest of the function and we return an x file of that cropped image uh, and make sure that you import this image cropper go all right now that we have that function here we want to add it to this part of the handle image function and this will basically allow us to uh, crop the image once they select it all right that looks good cool all right so let's try and crop that same image again like it. Oops, and I hit. Didn't hit save in time. All right. Now it should work. Select the image. All right, our cropper pops up. Let's turn it into a square and let's rotate it. Hit done. We now have our crop image. So this is essentially how you use both of these packages together. Uh, I highly recommend using them whenever you have like user profile pictures or you want to add attachments to different, I don't know, items in your list views or anything like that where you would need images and you make need to make sure that they're the right sizes for the app. So uh, this is how you use it and, and hopefully you find this useful and you can start using this for some of the apps that you're working on.